Hey, hello everyone. How are you doing? Today we are going to discuss about a special topic called React Memo. Very often I get a question. Hey, how can I stop re-rendering the child component if the parent component re-renders? You know, at some point of time, you might be doing something really expensive in the child componenting. You don't want that to re-render every time unnecessarily. You can do that using React Memo. And we are going to learn that in this video. You are also going to learn a few concepts through which you will be understanding React Memo even better. So why waiting? We'll just get started. But before that, as usual, I want to request you to subscribe to this channel if you haven't done already, because we keep sharing a lot of great stuff in this channel. All right. So without any further delay, let's get started. So we we'll learn the concept of React Memo with something called memorization. What is memorization? Like if you think about it, like what exactly it could be? So let's understand that first. Okay, so let's consider that we have a function. The function takes two arguments. One is m, one is n. What is that function is supposed to do? The function basically compute certain things and return a result. But while doing this computation, the function takes a lot of time because the computations are kind of heavy. Now, in this particular case, for your application to be faster, for you to not get a lot of sloth, you know, slothiness, what you would like to do is like you want to cache the result as much as possible. What is caching? Caching is basically a mechanism for with which you actually, you know, store that particular result value in memory. And when you see that the computation is going to result out in the same value, instead of computing it again, you actually return that particular stored value from the memory. So that is what is caching. So in this case, Let's consider this particular example, like for the same input, like, you know, m equals to 2, n equals to 3. If this particular function is going to produce the same output, instead of computing it every time, what we are going to do is like we are going to return the computed value, you know, to the, to the, to the sender, to the, to the caller. So this is good. This is going to actually reduce a lot of computation power and all these things, you know, that is required for this particular function to execute. But in case the input changes, you know, there is a new input that comes in. In that case, you have to compute this again. You have to again kind of store it into the cache and then you kind of return the cached value. That's how the things will go. So again, from the next time, if there is the same argument, same values are coming to this particular function, then you will be again returning from the cache than recomputing it. This particular memoized value is called memo. Okay. So the memoized value is called memo. And guys, please notice the spelling is M-E-M-O-I-Z-E-D. It is not a spelling mistake. It's called memorized. It is not memorized where there is an R. Memorized means is the ability to store something in the memory. Memorized without the R is the capability, is the capability in the computing. In that case, you actually return back a temporarily stored value as a cache. And if there is a new argument, you actually again recompute, store it, and again return it back. That's called memorizing, not memorizing. Okay. And you know what exactly memo is. So if you kind of see like what exactly uh, the definition, the definition is clearly says it's a technique to optimize computer program by caching the result of the expensive function calls and returning it from the for the same input that's what it is now we will take the same paradigm for react in the beginning of this series we actually understood that in react the functional components are nothing but the javascript plain old functions and the props that we actually pass to is nothing but something like an argument. So whatever we just now learned about the function, the expensive functions, we can actually think it like an expensive component, a React component with the props of M and N. Same philosophy, as long as the props are with the same value, you can actually cache the output, the output of the component. In this case, the output of the component is the JSX part, the computed part. You can store, you can cache and you can return the same every time. If the props change, the value of the props change, you kind of compute it and then you send the computed value and then store it. So this is what we are actually take from the regular functions to React component as a concept. Now in the last video, we learned the concept of virtual DOM. What exactly virtual DOM did basically, you know, if there is certain update in a node, so you have a node, right? And in this node, if there is an update, each of the node actually represents the element. So it means the state of the element gets changed. What will happen? It will create a new virtual DOM. 
and once a new virtual dump created the subtree from where from which element the update happened basically it will re-render right so that is what is going to happen so that the thing got re-rendered if you see the subtree get re-rendered it means the component that got the state update got re-rendered but its child is also got re-rendered but in this case what if the child is a component which is like a performing some expensive operation like if it is an expensive component now you may not want this child component the expensive component to re-render every time just because the state of the parent components has been changed you want to control it some way right so if you have a parent and child relationship in this relationship you may not want the child component to re-render every time the parent component is re-rendered it's all good that because of virtual DOM we are not updating the original DOM directly virtual DOM is actually giving some performance but you can do some of the performance enhancements up front little bit more using the concept of the memoization that we just now learned React Memo is a higher order component that comes out of the box with React. In a few videos before, we have learned about what higher order components. In React, there is a higher order component called Memo. That is what we are going to use to make sure that our child component is not going to re-render if the parent component is re-rendered. Okay? We will be learning the use memo, another hook and the use callback, you know, another approach of the similar kind of caching mechanism, not computing the heavy computations again and again in the successive videos. But before that, the concept of React memo will be very, very useful. Okay, so let's get into some coding now, where we'll be creating a parent component and then we'll be creating a child component. We will make sure the parent component render and we'll see the child component is rendering. Then we'll use the React memo to make sure the child component is not rendering. Then we'll come back and explain when you should not be using React memo. All right, so let's get into that. So we have two components over here in this UI. One is the parent component, the one with the red border. And then there is a child component, which is with the blue border. And the child component is used in the parent component. The parent component has a button. When I click on this button, one kind of counter gets incremented every time I click on it. And the child component having a heading with a paragraph in it. Okay, let's see it in the code. So if I see it in the code, the parent component is a very, very simple component, which is having a state variable called count. Every time I click on this button, the state variable gets increased. The a count get increased and I'm showing the count over here and I'm also using a child component. We'll get into the child component in a while, which is having a props called header. With that header, I am passing a string called I am a child. That's all. Now, if I go to the child component, child component accept this props, the header props, shows this header props in a H1 tag. This is what is coming over here and a very static paragraph that is over here, right? That's what we are, we are actually doing. And below, if you see what I'm using is something called react.memo. This is what is our today's session is about. So what is react.memo? The react.memo is a higher order component from React. And if you wrap your component into react.memo, it will make sure that for the same props that is getting passed over here, it is not going to recompute this JSX part again. Rather, whatever it is kept in the memory cached, it is going to send only the cached version of it. We are going to see that in practice right now. Okay, I have added uh, console.log to parent component saying parent is rendering and uh, the child component saying the child is rendering. So parent will first time will render. So first time render is done. Now what will happen is like, you know, if I refresh this one, it will render again for the first time and I see parent is rendering, child is rendering. So when parent got rendered in the subtree, child also got rendered. Now if I click on this button, I clicked on this, I see parent rendering. I haven't seen child rendering. I click on this one again. Again, parent rendering happened, but the child rendering didn't happen. I click it multiple times. Every time I'm doing parent rendering happening, child rendering is not happening. But in this case, what I am doing, I am actually, you know, modifying this state variable value. So of course the parent is getting rendering, but the child in this case is not getting rendering. Why? Because the child, every time the parent gets rendered, it's actually passing what? It's passing a very static props. And once I'm getting the static props over here, I am using React memo. That is the reason it is not getting rendered. Now see the case. 
I am going to re remove this React memo from here. This is what our code usually look like all the time. We don't use React memo all the time. So this is how the code is going to get look like. Now if I am just going to click on this, see the stuff, you see? Parent rendering, child rendering. I'll click again. Parent rendering, child rendering. Parent, child, parent, child, parent, child. So, see by default, child is rendering every time the parent is rendering but when you use react memo what happened this child rendering was stopped it was using the memo value the cached value and that is the reason you will be able to save a lot of stuff in terms of the performances you know when you don't want child to re-render again and again so let me bring back react.memo again react.memo i have got back and I am using it. So again, I'll be getting the functionality like that every time I'm actually, uh, you know, clicking on this one, only the parent rendering will happen. The child rendering is not going to happen. That is great. Now, I told that this will happen only when your prop is not getting changed. Okay. But if the props get changed, if this is a dynamic props, even if you use react memo this is not going to stop it from re-rendering okay because that's the purpose of it right the props change I mean the expectation from your component has been changed so it has to re-render so let's go ahead and make this prop a little dynamic how can i make it little dynamic maybe what i'll be doing is i'll be now passing this count over here because every time i click on this button this count value is going to get changed right isn't it so every time i click on this button this header will have a dynamic props first time it is i am a one child i am a two child i am three child so every time i click on it even though i am using react memo what i'm expecting the child uh, rendering will start appearing so child rendering child rendering child rendering child rendering child rendering you see that so react memo is great but should we use it every time the answer is no so what we have seen the, in the circumstances when you have the props which is not changing and your component is performing an expensive operation that's when you should go for react memo please remember when you use react memo it is not free react is also caching that computation caching the output jsx from the component so that it can reuse it so that caching is an extra step that react is doing and if you're using React Memo where it is really not applicable or it's not required, your component is going through that extra computation unnecessarily. So please take that call use wisely because I have seen in my you know code reviews that people are using the React Memo for child components quite liberally. You don't need that. If the process is changing, even if you're using React Memo, you know, just React Memo, it is not going to save you from anything. So please, you know, keep that in mind and don't use it liberally. We will be touch basing on use memo and use callback. These two are very vital points you can use along with React memo or without React memo. Okay, so you want to know what's next? So was it useful to you? If so, please share this video with your circle so that you know others also come to know about this video. You may be thinking like why am I learning a topic which I may not be using so often? The reason being it is always good to know something than not knowing. And I have seen or I have reviewed the code, you know, where people have used this React memo quite liberally, where they should not be using this. So it is good to know like where to use, where not to use. In the upcoming video, we are again going to learn about two hooks. One is use memo. Another one is use callback. So with that, the maximum number of hooks we'll be covering in this particular video series. And then we'll be getting into the topic of context and the store. All right. So with that, I am going to conclude this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. Lot more to come. Take care.